Okay, so let's, uh, I think I'm going to mix up a pretty good batch, actually. Now that's, uh, this is Tamiya, so uh, I really have to thin this down. Uh, I like to do 50-50, so I just grab my uh, X20 and I'm going to put in an equal portion. So we put in 4 plus 2, so a total of 6 mils. So I'm going to do 6 mils of thinner in here as well. This is uh, to make it work in a paintbrush, uh, otherwise you'll be fighting it for a long time. Good, so that gives us that sort of kind of skim milk consistency, which is what I really want. Excellent, so let's, um, that's ready for the airbrush, and we'll uh, head into the uh, the paint booth. Hey guys, so just wanted to let you know, uh, well just a little update actually. Um, so made a couple of, uh, there was a, a couple of spots where it could just, it wasn't perfect and so you can see I've, um, I did get out the putty and uh, added the, just, uh, just the ever so slight amount there and just sanding it down now started with uh, 1,000, I'm at 1,500 now, and uh, just getting it so it's going to be smoothed out, and uh, that should eliminate the couple of little spots that I wasn't, just wasn't 100% happy with. Um, I mean, they, I, I'm, I tend to be very, very picky um, on my paint jobs. I like the back end is perfect and so are these seams and uh, and that's how I kind of want uh, everything to be um, and so yeah so I thought and so since I'm doing these side there was ever so slight in bright light <laughs> uh, you could see just the smallest little bit here as well on this corner so I did also just add a little bit there uh, on both sides. This side wasn't so much, but it, it was just percept perceptible in the right lighting conditions. Um, yeah, so anyway, these are about to um, go into the... I'm going to just about to go back into the uh, paint booth and uh, reshoot those little areas. It's just a, not, a, not, a, not a big uh, coat here at all, just um, focused in these areas maybe just a little bit of um just blending uh around and um yeah that should be it for this uh, particular um hopefully that'll be it for this color and then um i can uh get this mask taken off and um and mask this and invert the uh get get rid of invert uh, the well actually not invert i keep the masks on the back but add masks on the this the dark uh, dark and and so that I can uh, shoot the light um, color which is uh, next up here so yeah uh, that's it hi guys so uh, finished up the second coat of the sort of light gray um, on the sort of boom part of our d7 it turned out really great I'm really really happy with that that coat and uh, yeah just just what I've been hoping for so I thought I'd start taking off a little bit of tape um, really hit that without too much trouble there Let's take off the rest of this. So far, I'm noticing my seam worked out perfectly. I mean, it's, it comes to such a fine razor's edge that actually... So some of my worrying was kind of maybe misplaced. I forgot just how fine that um, that edge comes to. And so, I mean, there isn't really room for it not to have 
kind of come edge to edge, which is just, just awesome. Really, really happy about that. A little bit of my glue there. It's rare. Oh, that turned out nice. Oh, I just love the finish there. That gray is so beautiful. Wow, it's got that just that hint of purple in there uh, with the two-tone green. Yeah, look at that. That's that's really great. Yeah. Hey everyone. So just still working away. Um, uh, just installed one of the side panels. I decided to do it in advance of even um, doing any other further um, clear coating here and just get it installed and it looks just great. Uh, really great addition there. Fits absolutely perfect. And um, just uh, what we wanted there. You'll notice I also did remove the um, warp nacelle uh, silver pieces as well. And uh, they turned out really really great too um, so yeah and got these two guys in um, there uh, yeah and I was just gonna work on the other side here so these are a little tricky to get in after um, so what I found worked on the other side uh, was a couple of things so um, to be able to do it of course we're retrofitting this and so I can put in the top part and then kind of try to get it to go down so to do that I have to take off just the back little bit of this bottom tab. So about that much is more than enough. And then I just cut that off like that. Oops. I'll just go a little bit further. There we go. Yeah, so we can see that that's now um, just gives us that little bit of extra clearance so that it'll be able to kind of go down into there. Um, and that's all that we need. And then in addition, um, uh, the little um, so that's the first part and then um, in addition we need this just this top corner to be a little bit um, less maybe let me just try here and see where we're at so far just with it like that so if we come in here yeah you see I need to come down a little bit might be able to do that just with it the way it is. Let me just try that here. Just see. No, I do need to go a little further up. You can see. So if I take off just this top corner, and I did the other, I did the same thing on the other one. Just take off a little bit here, about that much. There we go. So now let's try that again here. And so it lets us just... Um, insert there so that we've got a little bit of slippage there yeah and then that just goes down nicely and then we can just uh, slide it into place here um, now that it's down kind of into position I like that so that looks uh, really really nice again perfect really so that's just a little trick there if you are uh, retro uh, putting those in after you just need to trim those slightly like that and that should let you um, kind of pivot it in and then slide it in and uh, and have a kind of a perfect fit afterwards. So that's just a little update on some of the additional trim pieces going in and it's starting to really take shape now uh, that uh, those aluminum parts really make it uh, really make it pop. So I'll just do a little bit more work up here. I'll get these painted uh, as well. I'm probably going to just put some tape to get nice straight lines on just those. They can always be stuck back on. Let me just have a quick look. I'm just curious how clean the lines are here. Yeah, that looks great. So you can see how just uh, perfect those lines are. Actually, I'm sure we can see. Let's just zoom in there a little bit. So much nicer um, sort of result than the first go around, um, where it was very much um, didn't really look like that. Uh, let's just have a look at this one too. Yeah, that looks great. So you can see those are really uh, nice sharp lines now, and uh, really what I was kind of looking for there gonna put them back on for now um, in case in case I end up wanting to um, redo anything here I'm it's possible that I may still come back uh, to this uh, 
possibly. So if that's the case, I just want to keep those on there for now. It doesn't hurt to do that. And then the last one was this guy. This is the only one that was hand cut, but even that turned out pretty well. I'm pretty happy. That's going to be a hard line to do because it is just a, a manual uh, one there. And then there is the, the silver plug, which I did remove, and that'll just go back on. That actually dominates that anyway, so... I think that works out pretty well. Let me just put that there for a second. I just want to see if I can clean that ever so slightly along there. Yep. There. So that's just a little bit better. A little bit better. And just looks a little cleaner there now. Perfect. So let's put that back on, as I say, for now. Great, so that's a big improvement. Um, looks uh, excellent and really happy with that. Um, so one of the other big thing that's uh, that's come up is that I, I have been able to get um, the stand that I wanted. So uh, if you remember, I was kind of holding out a little bit um, to get another Polar Lights dome. Um, so I've kind of got the got to stand here for that and um, so it's going to look like that it's going to be painted black just like my other one to one thousand um, star trek uh, models which is great i just wanted it to be consistent and um, and so uh, this will go this is the piece that uh, actually attaches on to this and then this actually gives me a little pivot so i'll be able to you know, move it around and do the, the typical angle thing you're seeing. So what you can see here is that at the top, I need this to actually be the hole that's going to go down, uh, that it's going to go down into. And so, as you can see, um, it's really just a matter of um, adding a hole here. And what I'm going to do, or what I'm thinking of doing at this point, is actually just uh, drilling out the hole in the middle of these two. So it's going to be a little bigger, but if you notice... Uh, Thankfully, the piece that I'm using actually has a, sort of a little bit of a band that it can uh, be sitting on, and, and that's that'll be black. It's all part of the stand, um, and so then uh, that will cover up all of that um, when it's uh, when it's on the stand. Hi right, guys, so just gonna get after a bit of deckling here. Um, as you can see, I got my aqua gloss. coat put down and so um, uh, it looks nice and shiny and I don't know if you can see the focus goes a little odd there but anyway yeah nice and shiny so we'll get um, we'll get after getting the bits will be I say just coming along here so I like to put a pretty good pretty good amount so that it's got lots of Lots of fluid there to um, kind of as carrier uh, prior to us getting the decal on there. All right, and then normally I just use the same brush here to move the decal around. Just wait here. I'm just going to put a bit more water on this. Oops, I forgot to take the number off. So, I was going to do that. They, they kind of disintegrate and can actually get into your deco, which is not, obviously, not optimal. Okay, that's starting to, yep, that's starting to move there. So, let's get it up here. And the um, big thing here is just going to be making sure we get it. Um, properly uh, lined up. Oh, is it? I might have either just tore that or I guess I just, I guess I did just tear it. No big deal. That's just all carrier anyway, but 
It is a very long decal. Okay, so I've got it on there, so let's just let's get a little more water here. And get them positioned. It needs to go over just a little bit more. Hey okay, guys, so just applied the first decal there uh, on the very front there that gives the kind of sure if we can see that was really super close up there uh, so I did get a, a small tear uh, on the decal so I had to do a little bit of kind of maneuvering there to get it in position but I think I've got it pretty good there now um, been really looking carefully to make sure it's level uh, all the way across I believe that it is and um, and that it you know comes to the right level uh, on the left and right as well and I believe that is so I'm pretty happy with that I'm just gonna double check Yeah, it's pretty much perfect. Um, two. One, two. Yeah, it's perfect. So, yeah, it's uh, absolutely dead centered in there, which is what we want. Now there's not, uh, as it turns out, um, not a lot of, um, there's no, it, it's a small curvature obviously, but no, um, nothing that needs to be conforming there. So I'm actually, um, might not even put any uh, microsol on there. They're just I'm not sure that there's much point on such a flat uh, decal and it just sat really, really nice. I don't see any, <clears throat> any kind of silvering or anything underneath there. I've got all of the air out from underneath there. Uh, just using a Q-tip, I've gone back and forth over that quite a few times and uh, uh, I think I've got it pretty good. So I'm um, pretty happy with that one. I think we'll kind of call that one done. I did, um, as I say, I did get a tear. So I'm going to, one, one of the things I'm going to do is uh, get a little bit warmer water. I don't know if that had anything to do with it, but uh, it can't hurt to try. This was a little, this was my cold a fairly cool uh, decal water that's been sitting down here so I'm gonna go get some fresh um, warmer water and just see whether that helps with the the next ones especially these ones they're quite uh, long and delicate you can see just how I don't know if you can't see these ones very very delicate uh, really slim carrier there so I'm <laughs> after what I just went through that front one slightly nervous about them so i'm going to see if i can um uh, get uh, some other things working in my advantage uh putting those those uh, number three and two on uh, and see if we can get a little smoother smoother process this time so um so this is the uh the color that i'm i'm thinking about using here is this um in the uh, to me a set uh c there's a gunmetal um, color here uh, that I have used, uh, that I did use um, on the Enterprise, the 1-1000 Enterprise, so sort of the, the matching ship to this one on the nacelles. It, it isn't quite as clear in some pictures that, uh, you know, of the, you know, it does look like there could be a little bit of something going on there, um, especially kind of on the inside, just in this area. I don't believe there actually was, but I'm tempted to add just the teensiest little bit. Um, this kind of thing, uh, just uh, and uh, again, it's very, very slight here, if at all. And I'm actually just gonna brush some of that out. That's actually a little bit even. Just this little one here. Mm. 
hadn't already watched this one uh, doing the Romulan 1-1000 as well soon, and uh, I anticipate I'll do the same kind of thing on their nacelles too, just give a little bit of that consistency across the vessels and say, look, that that's probably something that happens as a result of the engine dynamics or the warp engine dynamics in some way. amount here don't wanna I feel like I got a little bit more on the other side here so good so yeah pretty happy with that extremely subtle <laughs> nobody will ever know they're new hey guys so just final look at uh, my Klingon D7 Battlecruiser. Um, it's uh, currently on its stand. I uh, so that's why it's kind of sitting so high. I uh, just wanted to show that as well. As you know, I did end up with uh, my standard dome um, and uh, and a different uh, mount there. Um, so I have uh, both. It's uh, certainly compatible with this with the dome stand, which just kind of plugs in over top like that. Um, and uh, works great. Uh, uh, all the photos that you'll see are on this stand, obviously, because that can it allows me to pivot. And I has a number of sizes of this um, little rod uh, that let me uh, be able to to uh, make various adjustments a lot easier. Um, obviously, then with the stand that came with it, um, which uh, still does fit in there. I didn't take out the. I didn't fill the two. The two holes are still compatible. Um, and it uh, it looks like this. It's the sorry, hairs there, um, and uh, just uh, this this obviously part uh, snaps in there, and then uh, the this part uh, still will connect in there with these two holes. And if I snap that down in, it'll, it'll hold it in place there. Uh, but it's a very stout stand, um, and it's not movable, so it's not uh, was not my preference. I got it prepped before I, I didn't think I would be able to get the dome. It turns out I I was able to finally get it, um, which is great. So I'm not going to use the Klingon one in all likelihood, at least not for now. Uh, but uh, the option does exist there if I ever did want to go to that. Um, yeah, so that's the stand update there um, and then uh, just take that out of the way here for now and then uh, the rest of it as you can see um, is uh, is done and uh, I really love it, it it's uh, just what I was really hoping for uh, the right color I, um, that I was going for in terms of the I went tritone it's a very subtle difference I mean you can barely tell Unless you just see this one spot uh, where you can you can spot that it is a slightly darker green than this. This is, as you know, 50% uh, um, whiter than that. It's the same color, but just a different tone. And so that's that's my two uh, versions of the the green, and then of course the the third tone, which is the the gray, um, that is uh, on all the sort of top surfaces here. And uh, it does have, as you know, just a little, little teensy little bit of um, this purple. Uh, really very, almost insignificant amount, but uh, just a drop in there. So that's why you do get this slight uh, hint of purple, which is, which is really all I was going for. Um, and so that's what, what we got out of it. Yeah, the model itself turned out great. It's a, it's a tough model in a sense in that the, there are a lot, there's a lot of gap work. Uh, to be done all of these seams are um, take a lot of a lot of work to to make seamless um, but uh, in the end it uh, it really did turn out great uh, I did struggle a lot I, <laughs> it's a really old um, old model and I when I bought it I um, uh, cult TV man 
uh, they, they did actually, there was a note that this was old stock and that uh, the decals might not be good. Um, I should have probably remembered that or taken that more to heart. As soon as out of the box, I um, I should have made uh, I, I should have just uh, produced my own set of them or 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 got some decal fix uh, over top of that that sheet that it came with. They they really did disintegrate. I had a an incredible amount of um, difficulties with those, and so in fact, most a lot of these decals are are not the originals. Uh, they're all just uh, my. Uh, th thankfully, I did, I, and as I always do, I did I did scan the decal sheet uh, out of the box. I do do that every time on every model, highest quality, high high quality scan, and then uh, thankfully was able to um, to just print them off on my own um, to make uh, replacement labels. Uh, in a lot of cases, as I say, that that had to happen because they just uh, didn't didn't work. Um, it were disintegrated or were just not uh, workable. They literally, as you would try to, you literally put them on and try to move them slightly and they just rip and tear and just a thousand pieces. Um, and so all of that. So there was a fair bit of rework. That was my, probably the one thing, if you are getting that older version, uh, you know, an old open box, this was even an open box, um, that, uh, yeah, you got to be really careful about the decals for that. But uh, not a big, big thing. Just time, you know, sets you back a little bit because you're, you know, you kind of take all that off. And uh, in some cases, I had to to re resand and repaint uh, in some areas and uh, and get them back on there. So, yeah. But overall, um, looks great. I really love the back end of this model. I just love the, and it's just the quality of the the model. It's just a great uh, way that they. It's very predator like uh, shark or stingray uh, kind of texture. And I mean, they have that sort of that leathery uh, look to it, which um, is perfect uh, for the, the shape and the look and the texture. It did add that little bit of weathering, as you know, just on the nacelles. Whatever that is that uh, appears on the Enterprise on the nacelles, I, I did duplicate that because I felt that that's likely something to do with the the working of the um, of the warp engines themselves. And these, are, uh, these would t probably have the same thing happening very subtle as you know just very very little that's really the only additional weathering over and above the the paint itself which as i say i did really try to get a uh, a very on that top the final coat on both of these it's a very dry very dry coat so that you get almost uh, that that leathery texture uh, that has its own because of the shapes of this model it has a sort of weathered sort of look they're they're interesting curves and uh, things that give it with this kind of finish uh, give it a kind of weathered look that I think is just just awesome so yeah uh, really happy with it hope you enjoyed the build um, a lot of fun and really good match uh, with the 1-1000 uh, Polar Lights Enterprise which uh, you'll see I've got a few shots of them uh, together and kind of getting maybe uh, they're not in combat, but they, they're uh, nice and close. Um, you can see they just uh, look great together. Um, so that's kind of a neat thing as well. Yeah, so uh, and keep your eye out. Um, if, you know, if you did enjoy this, uh, certainly like and subscribe would be great. And keep your eye out for <clears throat> the next... Uh, well, I've got lots of other models on the go, but uh, the next Star Trek one's likely going to be uh, the 1-1000 uh, Romulan Warbirds. So that'll be fun to kind of complete the complete the set there of those 1-1000s. One, one